Welcome to next Friday. Uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Um, so just a reminder, next Friday is a stream that I do every Friday. And the goal is to teach about Next. Sometimes I have students and uh, today I don't have any students. And uh, feel free to ask any questions in the chat. Today we are going to talk about uh, Home Manager. So Home Manager is a tool that allows you to configure your user profile. It basically takes the idea of Nexus. Um, so Nexus is great, you know, it allows you to configure your machine, but maybe you are on Ubuntu and you cannot use Nexus. And it would be awesome if you could use the same technology and configure your home. Uh, that includes like your dot files and the programs that you use and also potentially services that you want to run as a user. Um, right, so that's uh, we're going to talk about this today. And um, so where should we start? Right, so <clears throat> just quickly before we start, I want to show you something pretty cool. Um, so we're going to use this little script called Ubuntu to start the Ubuntu VM. And I built this because I wanted to automate the Nix installer um, to test it. And I just want to show you quickly this because I think it exposes something that uh, I often see is great in Nix is that things are composable. So at first, what I wanted to do is create this little uh, script that uh, builds uh, Ubuntu image and then starts it. And then the goal is every time you start the script, it would start from a fresh VM, right? And to make the startup quick, you want to snapshot the booted state so that you can enter back into the VM. And we're going to use this to install the home manager into the VM. And just as a quick preview, you know, with Nix, you can compose things together. So here I fetch the cloud image from Ubuntu. So it's a, like trusted well-known image. And then I generate, uh, I had to reverse engineer how it works, but I'm able to generate this disk image that contains startup information on when the VM starts, it creates a user, Ubuntu, Ubuntu, and a bunch of other things. And then finally, I'm able to start a QMU image inside of a Nix script and snapshot the result. And then the root Ubuntu script is just create a SSH key, run the build, and then use that to start the, the VM. So I thought this is pretty cool. Um, anyway, let's get started. So we have a Ubuntu machine. And for now, we don't have anything in it, right? Nix is not installed. So we're going to install Nix quickly. So that's the single, it's going to do the single user mode. So Nix has two modes, right? There's a single user where you your user owns the Nix store and only this user can use Nix on the machine. And then there's a daemon mode, which you can enable by going to the manual. And you start with uh, dash dash daemon, which is usually better, but in some systems, the single user is easier to pull off. Anyway, so we have Ubuntu. We have to log out and log in again. All right, we have Nix installed and the Nix binary is installed in your profile. Uh, so that's like the normal Nix setup. I think there's a channel. 
Right, next package is unstable. So if we do an update. So typically in the manual, when you're a user, you would do something like, okay, I need Vim. Um, I never use this, you can see. <laughs> so this is how you do it, right? Like you install Vim and then your VimRC is uh, kind of edited manually. And so the version of Vim that's installed here is the version that is provided by next packages at the time where you did the channel update. So in a few months, it might be a different version, right? And if you go to another machine, you have to make the list of all the packages here and redo the install and that works. Uh, the thing is, uh, maybe you want a more declarative way of doing things. And that's where Home Manager comes in. So this is the home page of Home Manager. And we're just gonna follow the config here. Um, right, so if you're not on Nexus, you ha may have to run this. So we run this. Next stores the profiles uh, under here. And the profile is a sort of pinned installation of things. It's not really precise, but just trust me on this. <laughs> um, what else? You need to add Home Manager as a channel. Hey Ryan! Do you want us to take a look at your config later, Ryan? I uh, will do it uh, a bit later once I'm finished with the setup. But thanks. I enabled the uh, uh, setting on Twitch uh, that allows lower latency, so I think we're able to chat a bit better as well. All right, so we have Home Manager as the channel, which means that it's fetch. Um, and again, the version here is depending on at the time where you did the pull. Next, I think we can skip this. So that's the bootstrap to install Home Manager. Alright, all done. Your Home Manager tool should now be installed and you can edit this file. So let's see, we have a Home Manager tool and this tool looks a lot like the Nexus uh, tool. So we can do things like build and switch. So build just builds the system test that everything works and then you can switch to the new config and if we do generations we have one version and if we build a new version then it's gonna be id2 etc and there's a home manager edit which opens the editor all right so we need vim Alright, so right now, all we have is we say Home Manager, please install Home Manager. Uh, if you remove this, then you're going to have to man install Home Manager some other way. Uh, we'll look at this later, but it's possible to install Home Manager on the system level if you're on Nexus. And then you have your system configuration and your user configuration that are sort of orthogonal. All right, so let's see, we, we can have, 
we can just add some packages. So let's say I need a curl and I need Gaussi. Okay. And now we do. There's a bit of a problem with my VM, uh, as you can see. Uh, that's a problem with QME. Okay. So now, if we do kern, it's there. If we do where's kern, it says it's installed in my next profile. And if we say Next Friday. Does Home Manager pull packages from Next Packagers or it has its own set of packages? Yeah, it lists it from Next Packages. Uh, um, we're gonna drill into the, the thing, but it loses all the packages from Next Packages and then it has its own set of modules that are not the same as the Nexus modules. It's using the same underlying mechanism, but it had to rebuild everything from scratch. All right, so now if we do nextm-q, we're going to see this home manager path thing. And we still have them installed in Nix, but home manager path is the thing that contains all your dependencies. So under the, knee, the hood, it builds this home manager package and then installs it into your profile. Um, cool. So now I just want to show you a common issue that you, you might see. So now let's say you had a bunch of things in your profile, right? Like Vim. And now you edit and you add Vim in here. What do you think is going to happen? So I do a switch and it's complaining about something. It says home manager has the, this file and Vim also has this file. So there's a conflict here, right? And um, so typically what you would do is slowly remove the packages that you have installed. And now if you do another switch, boom, you're good. And now Vim is managed by Home Manager. And you have something similar with the dot files. So let's say, um, right. So we can use, for example, we can configure Git So let's say we do something like that. Uh, username is Zimbatien. So if I do this and I do a switch, all right, now we have Git installed. And this should be a git in config here, right? So this is now managed by Home Manager. And if you take a look, this is the same link into the next door. So now if you do things like git config dash dash global user that name like this, it might do something I'm not sure, maybe it has another, I think, I don't remember how you set the config with uh, git. Does anyone know? <laughs> oh, then BST, 
Perl, I found a way to manage etc from Home Manager. Install Home Manager's root and add this module. Oh yeah, that's nice. That's kind of a nice hack. If you're on Ubuntu, for example, it makes sense. I think over time what we'll see is you, we're going to have this Nexus module system uh, manage all aspects of your machine from like Ubuntu. There's another project called Next Darwin that manages your macOS config so it can start uh, you know system services and install programs as well. So right now it's kind of split in different projects but I think we're going to find some nice common interfaces and then integrate everything together at some point. <coughs> um, all right, let's uh, let's pretend that uh, config git config already exists, right? Because you had configured your thing. And so now it's just a blank file. And and now Home Manager wants to manage this, so it's going to complain. <coughs> like here you can see existing file is in the way. Please move the above file and try again or use dash b x to move automatically. So I think you can do it like this or not. I'm not sure about the BX. But basically you would use the same strategy, right? Like you you would copy the con translate the config into the home manager config. And then when you're happy, you delete the file and you do a switch. And now the username is still wrong because I guess Git is reading it from another place as well. Um, can you force some manager to manage an existing file? <coughs> um, so right now the files are... So we just seen how to use existing modules, but probably we want to drill a little bit in how to find what modules exist and also how to create your own module or just add your own configuration and also right now the config is in config nix packages home that nix but probably you want to have this in a git config in a git repo right because you want to push this on github or something and make it easy to sync between machines so we're going to try to do all of this. Let's see the program a little bit. So we're installed uh, usage overview dot files. Right, so let's dig a bit more into the dot files now. So we have this home dot nix. And for now, we're just using some modules, but maybe we have custom dot files that we want to manage. So let's see. Um, what I do is typically I open the repo and I read the next code because that's uh, the best way I found. So let's see what mechanism it uses. that's all under the hood. So let's, if we go into programs and git, for example, we should see this is the config part with the schema. That's the options part is the schema. So we declare that there's a programs that git that enable attribute that exists and a few other things. So that's, you can read this part to discover all the options that you can set. And then the config part is the implementation. That's where all the values are. And right, so here you have this key called xdg config file. 
And so in theory, if you have a file, I don't know, let's say you have the inputs RC here. I don't know by heart the, the format, but that's the file that you have. And then what you would do is um, move the input RC in here, then open the home.nix, and now we say xdg config file is, and actually that's the wrong because that would be for the config folder. So xdg is going to be for any file that are under config. Um, let's pretend that this source was under the config folder and the file name is this and then the text is read file the, the input rc alright so now if you do a switch we should have an input rc file in the dot config folder there it is. So uh, yeah, I wasn't super clear here, but <coughs> let me know if there's any questions. Mm. Right, so that's what I did, Ren. Oh, this is a manual. We should definitely take a look at that. Okay, so that's a big page that's generated. And now you can search for XDG. Nice. So you can set a few things like, is it an executable? You can even use the source. So you don't have to do the build and read file like I did. All right, so now we have programs installed and we manage our dot files. Or we looked at that quickly. I'm sure there's some scenarios that we haven't covered, but we're able to do all of this. Now I want to talk about, so packages is easy, right? We just have this list of packages. Now I want to talk about services, which is a really cool feature. So let's say you use SSH. So you have SSH installed in the machine and you want to have a SSH agent running because you handle your keys, you load them and then you want this agent to be running in the background to hold your keys. And so this could be done by for example, having a startup script, every time you log in to a session, you check if the SSH daemon is running and if it's not running, you would start it. Or you can use Home Manager. And so if we look for SSH in here, we say program.ssh.nipl. And we set I'm not sure actually. I don't know if it's done automatically. That's the client configuration. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, 
I'm not sure if that's going to work. So this is specific to system D. System D has user services and there so system D manages all of the system services on Ubuntu and uh, most Linux distributions and it's also able to manage user services so you can start stop demons as a user and these are started when you when you log into your session and then by default they are shut down when you log out of your session All right, so I think this one is a system, this one is an XOS option, I think. But if I search SSH agent in here, now I see. Well, we can do it with the GPG agent, I think that's fine. It's gonna demonstrate the same. So services that GPG. So this is one to handle your GPG keys. And you can say enable SSH support. Okay, that should work. Alright, so now if we check, this should be a GPG. It should happen. Let's try to SSH it to another host. Let's see if Google allows. No. Maybe it's GNU. Um, that's a problem. So it should generate this GNU PG GPG agent.conf. Okay. And here you can see it says systemd user services GPG agent. Let's, let's query systemd. So systemd CTL is for the system, and if, if you do user. You can see that's all your user services, and we have this SSH agent, the socket, for example. So if we do this, uh, right, it's been created. Maybe now the daemon is, because it's socket activated, meaning it only starts when you access the sockets, which is uh, handled by systemd. So now, No. Hello. <laughs> Oops. It's definitely here, right? It's loaded and active. And if we do this, we can see it's installed in the next door. And we can also do a status. And you can see it's active and it's listening. So that's working. Mm. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, yeah, I wonder if Google security is good. You know, maybe they forgot to close port 22. So it's definitely working but I don't see the process. I don't know. I think we can also use journal CTL. No. 
I don't know, Trinan CTL has uh, units, but I don't know if it works for user services. Oh, user units. Okay, I think it's just starting and stopping the daemon on demand because it says closed here. Or I need to do something more than just gpg. Um, I need to generate a gpg key and all of that stuff. Yeah, maybe if I just list the keys, it's not going through the demon. I don't know, maybe we can just try it as a service. I mean, we would just require to use it a bit and debug it. But we have tons of services here, right? Like, you can start a Emacs daemon. You have... Um, IMAP notify, which is great if you want to load stuff, like your emails in the background. Keybase, Lorry daemon, MPD, which is music uh, daemon, Unison for syncing files, and Redshift to change your screen colors. Let's try Lurry. This one is a simple service. <coughs> so Lurry is a demon. That evaluates your next code in next projects. You should check it out. It's on GitHub. That I think it's in Target and Lori. It's pretty good. It's basically a next shell uh, on steroid. Just gonna paste the URL here for later. Hey, Contrain. How are you doing? Um, just gonna, um, I don't know, maybe 45 minutes, but we're already 36 minutes in. I don't know, I can be a bit longer. There's no stress. It's holidays. So, um, so we just looked at how to install and manage uh, dot files, packages, and services. And we just want to, I want to demonstrate that this is working, but I don't know, it seems to have some issues. Oh, it's another circuit activated service. So I think I need to create a, sh a project. Well, let's actually create our home config project. And this is where we're going to move our next uh, home manager config. And we want a shell that next in here for some reason. because we want to use JQ, because JQ is great. So now I can enter the shell. And if I type flurry, uh, watch. 
now it watches the shell and then every time it starts um, an evolution every time the file changes and uh, I am cursed I should have prepared Anyway, let's move the home manager config in here. All right, so we have our file here, and what we want to do is kind of bootstrap it. So now, if I do a switch, it's gonna break it can't find the file which is normal so what we want to do is so there's many ways you, you can do this um, you kind of want to pin all of the versions so you would need to install next on your target system which we're not gonna automate today and then once next in installed you want to run one command that sets up uh, your dot files basically. So um, I would look at first. There's a file in here. There's a home manager config environment file, right? So if we use a tool like Shell.next, we can say shell hook is like this. And now if we re-enter the next shell, that's the home manager config, it's here. And if we do home manager switch, it's going to complain because the input RC um what so that works okay the input rc is missing okay but i don't know why it's not picking up the that should be right right Um, Contrain, yeah, just send your PR and uh, I'll take a look. Oh, nice. There's a switch that is sage. Let's see this. So here I see a lot of right things. Um, the next path here it's fixed to a specific release of Nix packages, so you always get the same version at start. And then home manager is not fixed, but it's fine. And then I don't know, do you Ryan, do you install your do you copy your config into the dot files first or how do you manage the no, it's probably here somewhere. So that's uh, home config of Ryan Tim. <laughs> okay, so maybe even Ryan, which is a legend. We we'll learn something today. So in theory, let me just start a new shell. So here we are jumping into my personal config, and I have this file here. So 
So in, in this context, I know that it works. And I think, so I set the Nexus config to be this, and I set the Home Manager to be this, so that's the version. And for the Home Manager config, it sets to this. So in this, that's my dot .files, uh, they're not published. Uh, not that there's anything private, but I just uh, want to be careful. And in here I have dirn that loads the uh, env.sh and the env.sh uh, just builds that env.next so it's like a, an alternate of next shell that I built. Uh, I just wanted to experiment with using something different than next shell. And here I have create a build env and I set the home manager config to be pwd and then the host name of the machine so I can have a different config per machine and then in machines here is all the machines that I manage and same with the nexus config which is on the next path so this is pointing to the current machine, which is number one. All right, Contrain, let me know when you're back and we'll look at your PR quickly. Oh, Ryan, you simlink it. Okay. But I think if you s set the um, home manager config here, that's all you have to do. But then you have to be in that folder to do any changes to your configuration. If I'm here, because I use dirn to load the environment variables dynamically, uh, you can't do it, but if you're here, it's fine. So here it should work as well, right? I guess, yeah, if you simlink it, it works as well. Oops, that's not how you simlink. Alright, good. So now we have this in our git repo and we can push it around. So what else did we want to look? File conflicts we already looked, so when you switch and as a file it makes a uh, home manager complains about it. Uh, Nexus module, right. So this in this version we've seen that you switch your home manager config, right? But sometimes you have a machine that you control and you have an XOS config at the same time. And you want to switch them both at the same time. And in that case, it's possible to plug Home Manager with the XOS config. I'm not going to go into details here, but I just wanted to mention this because that way you upgrade everything in one step, right? You don't have your system and your user config that are upgrading at different times. If you do a switch of the Nexus system config, then everything is updated. And this is sometimes desirable. I don't know. I think people have to decide for themselves for that. Um, right. I'm just going to mention that it's possible for now. And you can do the same with next star window, there's also some integration. And right, um, so life is great. Now all your dot files and packages are managed. You even can start services. 
And so what are the downsides of this? So first, uh, you need to learn Nix, which is a pretty big ask if, if you want, just want to manage your dot files. I think the syntax is, takes a bit of time to get used to. Um, and it doesn't manage, um, if you have set UID binaries, like uh, sudo or uh, sway, for example, is a window manager that I use, and it doesn't uh, it needs to be run as with as roots to manage your sessions properly, so that the lock screen uh, just gets locked when you shut down, uh, you close your laptop, for example. So that's not managed. But I don't think other systems that do that files uh, manage that as well. Um, right, I think that's it. Ryan said, uh, don't like doing that because it couples user packages upgrades to system configuration updates. Yeah, I agree. Like, sometimes it's nice because I've had cases where, for example, the Qt toolkit uh, kind of needs to have the same version and you, it's nice to have everything updated at the same time. But I agree, I think Keeping the system configuration minimal and then adding your own user configuration on top is really nice and it's sort of orthogonal and it should stay like that. It's not always possible but I think for 99% of the cases you can do this and I think this is really awesome. So if I just show you my system config for example, here I have only it's quite minimal, right? Like, I set uh, system stuff like I want libvirtd, my time zone, some hardware config, and yeah, system services that are like I need open SSH. Uh, I can't really handle this as a user. And then, as a user, I have this per machine home. And here I set the Sway status bar that's specific to the machine. And otherwise I can import other files and I can start composing things together. So in the home Sway.nix, I have everything for the Sway window manager. So all of these tools. Um, yeah, actually this is, uh, you, what you're seeing right now is Sway running. All right, Contourin, I'm almost finished with the presentation. So I just want, what is, the profile that Nix has all the programs that I use here. There's a big list. I set my bash RC, my git config. You can find my signing here. So it's really nice, I think. I'm quite enjoying it. And I have the GPG agent running. And SSH. Right, so is there any questions? Ryan says for Emacs people, you should check how you can byte compile your Emacs config at home manager switch time. Oh yeah, that, that's nice to start up your Emacs much faster. Um, I guess it's using the same principles that I was doing for the QMU machine. Uh, is this configuration will work on Darwin too? Yes, it should. Um, Nix on Darwin is not always supported for every packages, so you have to check it. But most of the cases you can just enable things. Um, for services, although that's not going to work. So if you have systemd services, I don't think there's a translation layer to the... Actually, I don't think macOS services are allowed as a user. I might be wrong on that. Don't count to me. All right. Thanks for watching. I'm just going to have a quick look at Contourin's um, PR now. 
And uh, yeah, if you want to talk about anything, I'm really open to show you guys anything that I know. Um, I've been doing this for like two years, three years, and I've touched a lot of different things. So I'm really happy to, you know, share the knowledge and that's really the goal of the stream. <laughs> I think um, I might start uh, streaming at more fixed time because I changed the time a few times. So, yeah. And also I think Home Manager here has a lot of people coming. So I might do more planned courses. Before I was just answering to students' questions, which is, I think, kind of fun, but people are not necessarily interested in one person's problems, right? So I'm tr thinking of interspersing one-on-ones with uh, more generic things like home manager config. And yeah, let me know on Discourse. So we have this thread. Oops. So if you search for our next Friday here, here you should leave a message here if you want to learn about anything that hasn't been covered yet. And then I will see how I can schedule this. And there's also a YouTube channel if you want to catch up on the old recordings. Haha, <laughs> ice cold switch. Thanks for joining and Rizari as well. Uh, quick question for production settings like in server is it good to use home manager? Um, I don't know, it depends on uh, what you want to do. I think it makes sense, yeah. Like, you just want to have. Oh, my voice is echoing. Okay. Just a glitch. So on servers. So personally, I tend to not assist. I try to avoid SSHing into servers as much as possible. So I don't need that many config. Usually it's just to debug things, so I typically use next run to load the things that I need, like I don't know if I need, if I need S trace, I would just do next run next packages that S trace and now I have S trace available, right? But yeah, I don't know, it's up to you if you're gonna SSH into the server regularly, maybe it makes sense to have your custom config. Let's see if I can. <clears throat> so I promised Contrain to take a look at this here. VS Code with configuration. Nice. Yeah, we had a quick look last time. So this has been extracted in here. All right, I think we need a bit more time for this. So Contrain, I propose that we just do a one-on-one -on -one after the stream. And we can meet on Jitsi uh, next Friday. I'm gonna shut down the screen now and then uh, just join me here and we can have a look, All right? All right, thanks guys. Uh, thanks for coming.
next week uh, I don't know what we're gonna be doing but check out the calendar on the website and here there's a calendar and you can subscribe so you can add it to your agenda if you want to follow closely right next Friday is open so I don't know what I'm gonna be talking about yet but uh, yeah I will let you know on this course and have a great day and happy holidays <laughs>